Hi all, apologies for not being um, in college today. Hopefully I'll be back very soon. Um, but I just want to go through the keynote that I was going to go through lesson today um, because I wanted to start composition. Now we have already had a look at composition briefly when we um, introduced the um, taking the box for a walk project. Um, so we're just going to expand upon some of those um, original compositional ideas we talked about. Um, so here on the screen, these are some of the main compositional ideas um, that apply to a lot of photographs that you actually have already taken. Um, so for instance, the rule of thirds, the golden section, dynamic diagonals, uh, use of light, use of corners, contrast, um, symmetry, detail, texture, um, differential focus, vantage points, uh, depth of field, uh, leading lines and perspective. So I'm just going to go through some of them because um, no doubt you've heard of some of them, but some of them you might be unclear of. Um, so we're just going to delve back into the idea of the rule of thirds. Um, again, I know we've discussed this, but just to reiterate, you know, this is really good compositional idea you can apply um, to your photographs or to, to any form of design, really. So remember, by splitting up your frame into three sections, so whether that be horizontal or vertical, um, your object of interest, whatever that may be for, in the case of your boxes, when you took the boxes for a walk, by placing the object of interest on one of these intersecting points will really um, have a massive impact on your composition. It will make the composition stronger and aesthetically more pleasing. Um, the next one, um, again, which sort of links to the idea of the rule of thirds is what we call the golden section. So the golden section, the idea is, again, if your object of interest, whether it be um, a building, a fence or a person, um, if that object of interest is in one third of the image, again, this creates an aesthetically pleasing composition so it can be on the right hand side of the frame the bottom uh, the left or at the top um, so again that's something to keep in mind um, when um, you are thinking about these set of photographs that I'm going to be asking you to do over the next couple of days so we're going to look at the work of an artist called Henri Cartier-Bresson arguably one of the most um, influential and important photographers ever. Um, now, this is one of his famous images. I mean, um, Bresson um, was famous mainly for his um, street photography. So he would often be found on the streets of Paris um, taking photographs of um, what would be later described as decisive moments. Um, so if we were to look at this image and use some of those um, compositional terms that I've just shown you. Um, what's interesting about this image, I mean, it, I, I don't know about you, but a lot of people, when they look at this image for the first time, the first thing that grabs their attention is the cyclist on the bike. Um, now, if we were to put that rule of thirds grid over the top, you can see that the cyclist is hitting one of those intersecting points. And also, quite interestingly, he is also in what we call the golden section. Now, there are other technical terms that we can apply to this image as well. I mean, the use of these leading lines, um, the handrail of the stairs, this leading line guides your eye sort of down to the cyclist without you even realise realizing that it's doing it so embedded in this image we have these other compositional ideas as well um, so the leading line of the handrail the idea of perspective and also this um, term which we call vantage point now vantage points can be high or low so in this case um, Bresson is taking the photograph from a high vantage point looking down on his subject um, and then the term dynamic diagonals is similar to that of leading lines. Um, the only difference is with a dynamic diagonal, they often cross each other. Um, and in this case, you can see um, that the handrail crosses over um, at the bottom and at the top. So if it is that you're interested in Henri Cartier-Bresson, um, we will be talking about him, um, no doubt, over the next sort of couple of years that you're with us. 
Um, but some of you may be really interested in street photography and if that's the case really have a look at Henri Cartier-Bresson's work especially focusing on that idea of the decisive moment. So let's have a look at some photographs that students have taken in the past. Um, now here's one that was taken of the um, the fence um, just at the back of the Kentigan. So what's quite interesting about this image is that it looks at the idea of differential focus or what we call depth of field. Now we will be talking more about the depth of field um, next week when we start to work with the camera manually. But ultimately differential focus basically means that one part of the image is in focus and the other is out of focus. Now you'll see this quite a lot, it's quite a nice um, compositional idea people apply to say for instance portraits or street photography um, when you're trying to capture um, the foreground um, interest rather than it be too busy it's sort of focusing on one area so in this case focusing on those railings you know the, the contrast of the back as well so um, I've just show you another example of differential focus. So you can see here again, we have the railings, but this time on the right hand side, the actual background is in focus and the foreground is out of focus. So differential focus can work both ways, both foreground interest and background interest. Um, but that differential focus um, and depth of field are pretty much the same thing. Um, but again, we'll be talking in more depth about depth of field next week <laughs> um, and looking how you um, can control the depth of field by changing your aperture. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that next week. Here is another piece of work. So again, looking at those technical terms at the bottom, have a quick look through them and think about the ones that would apply to this particular image. So again, looking at this, you can see that embedded in this is dynamic diagonals, the idea of perspective. We all understand what that means. Um, obviously, leading lines. Um, there is pattern within this image as well with the ladders. Um, and also the vantage point is slightly different from that of Cartier-Bresson's image from before. This time we're from a low vantage point looking up. So remember, high vantage point looking down low vantage point looking up and um, what's really interesting about this particular piece is that the leading lines are coming from the corner of the frame so you can see the bottom of the ladders there touching the corner of the frame this is a really really useful tool um, when you're composing your photographs um, because naturally your eye is drawn to the bottom corners of whether it be a painting a photograph or um, an editorial piece um, so yeah, think about that when you're taking these photographs, you know, having the leading lines coming up from the corner, you know, will really make a, a really aesthetically pleasing composition as well, especially if you're doing anything with, with architecture, etc. Here's another image that was taken by a student. So again, have a look at those um, technical uh, compositional ideas at the bottom and apply them to this image. So again, we have these leading lines, um, we have the idea of pattern, and in this case, repetition. Um, we have perspective, and we also have the contrast, you know, the safety tape that you have at the edge of the, or in this case, the paint that you have at the edge of the stairs. Um, with this one, as you can see, I've highlighted something that's called use of frames. So in this case, what I mean is, is that um, the term would be fill in the frame. So the stairs pretty much fill all of the frame. Um, you know, we can't see the handle. We can't see where the stairs are going to and from. Um, so this is quite a good technique, especially if you want to, you know, get the idea of pattern um, and repetition within your image. So have a look at these images now. Um, using those terms at the bottom of the screen, apply some of those to this image. Which of these compositional ideas can you see in this piece?
And then this one, again, which of these compositional ideas can you see within this photograph? So what I'm going to be asking you to do ready for Thursday's Teams lesson is I want you to take between 30 and 40 photographs. Um, you can use your phones again for this if you wish. Um, now, ideally, at this point, we'd be going out and taking the photographs around campus. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that um, today because I'm not there. Um, but we would usually ask you to focus on architecture because for something like this, angles and viewpoints, um, to deal with um, a static object such as a, a building, etc., will make it easier for you. So if you can, please, I'd like you to just focus on architecture. Try and avoid images of people, um, trees, anything like that. Just focus on structures. And I want you to explore some of those compositional ideas that we've just discussed. Um, now we call this, what we call this is um, angles and viewpoints. So I really want to think, you know, you to, to think very carefully about, you know, shooting it in portrait or shooting it in landscape, you know, thinking, you know, where you're placing the building within the frame, you know, using corners, using leading lines, thinking about the golden section and applying the rule of thirds to your compositions. You know, I really want to think you to think about where you're stood next to the building, you know, stand right up next to it, you know, have a look at the, the, the patterns that are embedded in it. Um, you know, I, I really want to see the ideas that you have for composition here. Um, so again, you can see at the bottom, we've got those lists. As you can see as well on your desk, um, there'll be a printed version of those um, compositional ideas. So you can take that with you and, and hopefully really experiment with compositions. That's what I'm looking for. And here's some examples that um, students have done in the past. As you can see, there are no people, no trees, just focusing on the architecture. That's what I'd like you to do. And then what we'll be doing on Thursday um, is we'll be, um, I'll do a little quiz to see um, if your idea, your knowledge of composition um, hopefully has improved after this. Um, and then I'm going to be getting you to put together what's called the compositional fact file. So similar to that, what you've done with the camera obscura, but this time using your own images that you've taken. So converting them to black and white, leveling them, and then, you know, creating a layout, highlighting and annotating those technical terms next to the images themselves. Using diagrams, as you can see here, we've used lines to demonstrate perspective, um, where the leading lines are. There you can see where the rule of thirds has been applied. So you'll be creating something like this on th in Thursday's lesson and into Friday's support session as well. So just a reminder, please make sure that you take those photographs ready for Thursday's Teams lesson. Hopefully the weather will be better than it has been this weekend. If you have any questions, just message me on Teams or email me, whatever's easiest. And just a reminder, there is also a list on your desk that I'd like you to complete, please. Um, as you'll see that the assignment has been put on Teams for your Camera Obscura and your Camera Obscura um, examples pages. Um, those of you that email me them, please will you make sure that you attach them to the assignments. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions, please just get in contact.